This just in. Monsters of an unknown origin have invaded numerous cities throughout the world, causing massive destruction and civil unrest. Who are these creatures? Where did they come from? And what do they want? We now take you to the headquarters of the diabolical minds believed to be responsible for these gargantuan creations. War of the Monsters is a platform fighter set in the style of vintage sci-fi monster movies with big creatures battling in cities, grabbing cars and throwing them at each other, grappling and punching, smashing the city. As you progress through it, you kind of see a simple story evolve, just like you would in any typical B-movie. Armies are mobilizing while local authorities are doing their best not to aggravate these gargantuan beasts. In War of the Monsters, everything is interactive. Every building you see, you can crush it and destroy it. Debris scatters on the ground. If cop cars drive by, you can pick them up and throw them. Climb to the top of a skyscraper and there's a radio tower there. Peel it off, throw it at your enemy and impale him. So it's not just the stuff's interactive, but they also actually function differently. So when I grab like a power transformer off of a building, I actually can fire electrical blasts out of it. You can do things like sneak up on people and kind of shove them into the power lines and watch them get shot. When the military attacks you, if you take the risk to run up at them, you can pick those guys up and you can launch missiles at your opponents. There are some levels where just swarms of military choppers right out of the movies will come right at you and you can smash and destroy some of them or you can grab one look at your opponent, and then throw it right back at him. Just like the monsters of the Atomic Age, these titanic nightmares seem to be bent on the destruction of anything in their path. Buildings are being knocked over like blocks, cars hurled like toys. The cityscape has become a giant playground for these battling behemoths. The environment only provide debris and things to throw, but they also have a number of built-in weapons to them or built-in events that occur. We have this kind of neon futuristic city set up where you can actually trigger tidal waves that will come out and kind of wash your enemies partially away. We have another one that's set in this tropical resort kind of setting with a volcano in the background, it's supposedly dormant, and as you fight kind of on the shoreline, uh, you can actually find ways to trigger the volcano, which will begin raining hot lava down at your opponents. Here at WPSU News, we are tracking each monster as it rampages through the streets, causing great havoc. Once these creatures get closer to each other, we'll be switching you live to our close combat camera for a better view of the action. We didn't want to be a standard fighter tied down in hand-to-hand -hand combat. We wanted to be able to have the players do free-roaming combat, long-range and short-range. So if you're doing two-player deathmatch, for example, you have a traditional two-player split screen so that you can run around the arena. But when you get close to the monster, the real-time changes, and the two viewports become one into a more traditional fighting view. Then you can wail away on each other in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Sometimes you end up going from rooftop to rooftop in these very dramatic monster battles, which usually climax in a heavy hit from Rockman or one of the other slower, heavier characters, knocks you completely out of the level, and then it transitions you back into two viewports. These monsters seem to be in complete control of the destruction. What makes them so agile and powerful? When we started off designing War of the Monsters, we wanted to make the game very pick up and play, very mass market, but we didn't want to lose the hardcore gamer. So what we did was we developed a control scheme that allowed a newbie to pick it up and just wail away on the buttons and have a really good time. Simple light attack button, heavy attack button, hybrid action button, and jump. That's it. But then as you play further and further into the game, the more advanced players will find that they can do modified combos. What happens is as you play through the game, different types of mechanics emerge in different combos. So you might do jump and then climb a building, jump off the building, and then do a butt stomp. Go right into hand-to-hand -hand combat, do up and heavy to do a stun hit, grab the guy and throw him into a building. Now those are all just mechanics that are built right off a very simple control pad layout, but they also yield a very spectacular combo. On 
unbelievable. The one creature actually seems to be challenging the other to a fight. He's literally taunting him. Well, folks, this can't be good. What would a fighting game be without having the ability to taunt your opponent? You're sitting on your couch, you just beat down your buddy, you have to be able to taunt him, make him feel really bad about what just happened. But in War of the Monsters, we take the taunting a little bit further. When you get fully boosted, when your monster collects enough monster energy and you taunt, you get a boost. And for a set amount of time, you do like double or triple damage, depending on the character. So taunting not only is cool just from the demeaning value to your opponents, but it also is an integral part to gameplay. Is it the end of the world? Will humanity survive? Which monster will prevail? Stay tuned for more at 11.